why does Netflix rarely crash when 100 million people bin Stranger Things while Disney Plus melted down on launch day with just 10 million people? The answer isn't what you think. It's not about having more servers or better engineers. The secret is in how they organize their kitchen. Today, I'm going to show you exactly how Netflix, Uber, and Amazon serve millions of users without breaking a sweat, using a strategy you can visualize as transforming a single food truck into a restaurant empire. Let me introduce you to Mono. He runs a food truck called Mono's, and he's drowning. Mono does everything himself, takes orders, cooks the pizza, makes the sushi, bakes the desserts, handles payments, all by himself. The line is wrapped around the block. Orders are piling up, and then Mono gets sick. Everything stops. The entire food truck shuts down. Every customer goes home hungry. This is your monolithic application, one code base doing everything. And when any part fails, the whole thing crashes. Remember Twitter's fail whale? During the 2010 World Cup, Twitter hit 3,283 tweets per second and crashed to just 40% uptime. Why? because when their database got overwhelmed, it took down everything, the entire platform, dead. One chef, one kitchen, one point of failure. This is the problem that brings down websites during Black Friday, during product launches, during any moment that actually matters. So here's what the tech giants figured out, and this is where it gets brilliant. Instead of one chef doing everything, what if you built specialized stations? A pizza station with its own chef, a sushi bar with its own team, a dessert counter that operates independently. This is microservices, breaking your application into small, independent pieces that each do one thing really well. Each service is a separate restaurant station. The pizza station, that's your user authentication. The sushi bar, that's your payment processing. The dessert counter, that's your notification system. They all have their own kitchen, their own staff, their own menu, and most importantly, their own database. Now here's how the magic happens when a customer places an order. The customer uses the app. That order goes to the host. In tech terms, the API gateway. The host looks at the order and says, okay, this needs pizza, sushi, and dessert. The host routes each request to the right station. And here's the key. They all work in parallel. The pizza chef doesn't wait for the sushi chef. The dessert team doesn't wait for anyone. Each station prepares its part independently at the same time. Then everything comes together for delivery. Same concept in tech. User request hits the API gateway. Gateway routes to off-service, payment processing, notification service. They all process simultaneously. Results combine and return to the user. It's the same idea, just different language. Host equals API gateway. Stations equal microservices. Let me show you how the giants actually use this. Netflix runs 700 microservices, 700 separate restaurant stations. They handle 2 billion hours of streaming every single month. That's 280 million subscribers worldwide. Their video player, separate service. Recommendations, different service. Billing, another service. Search, its own service. Notifications, you guessed it. Uber takes this even further. 2,200 microservices handling 150 million active users and 15 million rides every single day. Driver matching runs independently from payments. Route optimization doesn't wait for ratings to process. Amazon? They pioneered this approach. Hundreds of services running their massive operation. Shopping cart, inventory, shipping, reviews, recommendations, all separate restaurants. They process $1.6 million in sales every single minute. And here's the real proof this works. March 2024, Instagram DMs crashed. 
completely down. But you know what kept running perfectly? Stories, posts, shopping, reels. Everything else worked fine. That's microservices in action. When one restaurant closes, the others keep serving customers. Now watch this. Black Friday hits. Everyone's shopping. Do you scale up your entire application? No. You scale the cart service 10 times, the payment service 5 times, but the profile service stays the same. Nobody's updating their profile on Black Friday. Monolithic approach? Scale everything. Pay for 100% of infrastructure. Microservices approach? Scale what you need. Pay for 35% of infrastructure. You just saved 65% on your biggest traffic day of the year. Now, before you rush to rebuild your app, let's talk reality. The benefits are huge. Your pizza oven breaks? Fix it without closing the sushi bar. In tech terms, deploy in eight minutes instead of six hours. Need AI capabilities? Hire a Python specialist for that one service. Need rock-solid payments? Bring in a Java expert. They don't have to coordinate or compromise. But here's what they don't tell you in the hype articles. Managing multiple kitchens is complex, way more complex than one food truck. You need orchestration tools, monitoring systems, service mesh networks. Your restaurants have to communicate, and that takes time. Network calls add latency. Your pizza station has to call the payment station, which calls the inventory station. And it's expensive upfront, three to 10 times more expensive initially. You need Docker, Kubernetes, load balancers, message queues, monitoring tools. Remember, Facebook went dark for six hours in October 2021. Every service down, $100 million in lost revenue. That was a monolith failure. With better architecture, 85% of functionality would have kept running. So should you use microservices? Here's your decision tree. Team smaller than 10 people? Stick with the monolith. You're still in the food truck phase, and that's perfect. 100,000 to 100,000 users? Start planning. Learn the patterns. Prepare your team. Over 100,000 users? Start migrating. Begin with three core services. Authentication, your core business logic, and notifications. Remember, microservices solve scaling problems, not coding problems. Netflix went from one food truck to 700 restaurants. You can too. What's your biggest takeaway? Drop it in the comments. And if this clicked for you, hit subscribe.